Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to continue our look at Luminar AI. I'm going to show you a possible workflow for a landscape image, specifically a sunset, because I think these are very common types of landscape images many of us shoot. Now this is a raw file, it hasn't been processed at all. Over here on the right hand side, I'll just click on this little eye and you can see that it's a Sony raw file and you can see all the info right there. Now, one possible workflow you could use is the template method. So I'll, I'll do that, I'll go over to the templates and then at the top, it will give you recommendations for the photo because I've, as I've stated in previous videos, Luminar AI examines the photo and knows what elements are in the photo and then it will recommend templates for that scene. Now, what they've told me over at Skylum Software is this is still in development. They're continually adding new templates to Luminar AI and they're not all kind of wired up. So it's not um, accurate yet is I guess what I'm trying to say. So it may give improper or wrong information or suggestions under for this photo. For example, it's saying lifestyle. This is not a lifestyle image, so that is wrong, but it did do natural skies and sunsets. So it did see that part um, okay. So we'll go to uh, sunsets, and then you could see here there's five uh, different sunsets, and you could click on them and get an example. Now, I want something that looks like it looked when I was there. Now this, it didn't look like this, so I really don't want this look here. So I want something that's close or maybe exact and then I'll be done. But we'll go to impact, take a look at that and let it kick in. And I don't care for that one at all. We'll go to hyperdrive. You know, on this one here, the colors are correct. This is the way it was, you know, as far as the colors were, but it's way, way, way too sharp and too much structure uh, for that one. So I could go through and keep looking at them. Dream film that I just don't like at all. Argent is black and white. I don't want black and white. Well, hyperdrive was the closest. Now I could just abandon this altogether and just jump right to edit and start editing it on my own. Or I could use the template as a starting point. Now I'll use this as a starting point. It's still way, way too sharp. And the reason why I'm using it as a starting point though, is the colors are pretty much spot on to the way it was when I was there. Now I could go down here to this slider and this is like a opacity slider for the template. So I could dial it down, but I really don't want to do that either. I don't think that looks quite right. So I'll just jump over to edit and I'll edit off this template. And when I go to edit, anything that the template adjusted, you'll see will be highlighted. So you could see it didn't do composition erase. It didn't do black and white of sort, but it did do landscape, color structure, light, and so on. So I could click through here and adjust or readjust what I want to. Now I mentioned it's way too sharp, way too much structure. So I'm going to go to the structure um, adjustment and I'm just going to reset it because I just think it was way, 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 way too sharp. So I didn't like that at all. Now as I look at it, um, it's starting to look a little better. Uh, we'll go to light. And um, it brought exposure up a little bit. And I'm just going to pull exposure down. It wasn't that bright there. So I'm just going to pull it down a little uh, to what they had it. And we could see that it didn't do anything with black and white or curves. That's okay. Uh, AI Enhance, it put uh, it at 60. I'll leave it there. It looks okay. So it's starting to look a little better. I mean, uh, we'll go to uh, color. And you can see it brought saturation and vibrance down. We go to the HSL uh, panel. I don't think it did anything here either. But it's it's really uh, got some sunset color in there. So we'll go to landscape and you can see that it pushed a golden hour up quite a bit. So I think I'll, I'm gonna dial that down uh, just a little bit. And I think it's starting to look a little more like I remember it. Now you could see that um, on the creative panel, you can see there's a little dot in the corner there. That means that there's an adjustment here too. So I'll go there and you could see that mood was adjustment adjusted. Mood are LUTs. So it used a landscape sunset dramatic uh, LUT for this image. And I'm just going to leave it. That's okay. 
and then I'll go to portrait, but pro has a dot next to it. So you can see, we'll go there and you can see that it did color harmony. So we'll go here and it didn't do anything with brilliance and warmth. It didn't do any color contrast. It did split color warmth and you could see how it added a warm look over here uh, to it. And it, it, so it, the warm tones, it made warmer in the cool tones, it made warmer as well. That's okay. I don't mind that. So it's close to what I want, but it really isn't there yet. So I'm going to go back to the essentials tab and I am going to go to details a little bit and I'm just, just going to see if I add a little bit of large detail. I like to do these in inverse order because uh, if you go to small detail right away, you could see that you could really make it look HDRE. So I like to kind of go from the bottom up a little bit. And I think just a little bit of medium details is fine or add a little sharpening, just a tiny bit. I didn't want it to get as sharp as it was, but I wanted it a little more sharp. Now, these uh, cliffs over here in the uh, background, those are kind of dark. So I want to use a local adjustment for that. So I'm going to go to local masking and I'm going to click add and I'm going to go to base. Okay. And then I have a brush. I'll use the left bracket key and make it a little smaller and we'll come in here and I'm just going to brush in and you'll see the mask go on and I'm going to brush in these cliffs up in here. And and those trees a little bit as well. And up in here. As well. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. Getting a little brighter there, you can see. Open up the shadows a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of saturation back in there. And maybe we'll just try to inch up brightness just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good, so that's fine. And I'd say I'm pretty much done. We'll go back to Essentials, and we'll go to Vignette, and I'm going to add a darker vignette on it. And maybe a little more even. Yeah, and I'd say that's it. So there's before, and there's after. Before, after. And then I think that was pretty much um, representative of the way it looked. I was there just a few days ago. Those of you that follow me on Instagram know that I posted a short video while I was here. And I think you'll agree if you saw that video that it looked pretty much like this. This might be just a little bit sharper than maybe I like as I look at it. And sharpness is one of those things that uh, sometimes as you're processing an image, your eyes get a little bit fatigued and it will start to look like it's not sharp enough and you start pushing those sliders up a little bit too high and it's best to walk away and let your eyes rest and then come back and look at it and then you'll go, oh, wow, yeah, I did over sharpen it. So I'm going to take all the sharpening off it. There really is no noise because it was shot at a uh, very low ISO. So I think that's done. I could go to then to export it and you could see that you could save it to disk, send it through email send it through a message on my Mac, uh, Smug Mug or 500px, I could just save it to disk, click there, and then it will bring up the export dialog box. And then I could save it as a JPEG or a TIFF file or anything like that. I'll save it just as a JPEG. And I think I'll just rename it sunset.jpg. And I'm not going to do any sharpening on my export. And I'll say this is for Instagram with a long edge of 1080 sRGB. All that's good. And just click save. So I saved it. So that's one possible workflow where you use a template and process off the template. Now I'll do a future video with a landscape image where I don't use a template at all. And I just start processing the image from scratch. And next week I have a photo shoot uh, with a model and I'll take some of those images and I'll do a video demonstrating how to process um, a portrait. And we'll work on that uh, next week. You'll see that. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.